I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because I don't think you really understand the significance of what you do here at LSOS because there's people like me who use the products that you use and uh, your uh, effort has touched the lives of many, many people across the United States. I'm thinking of significance and I guess sometimes if you're in a laboratory and you get abstracted from the application of what it is that you do, you might wonder why am I doing this over and over and over again. And what is the real significance of it? Think about this. There's a, there's a firm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that produces these little squiggly colored rubber bands that go around teenagers. <laughs> You've seen them before. Yes? Uh -huh. They collect these things. People come up with that idea. It's a family-run business. And uh, they're millionaires now, right? But uh, you could be working for them. And what would the significance of that be? Exactly. <laughs> uh, in terms of gratification, you must derive knowing that what you're doing uh, I don't think that Mary Shelley and her uh, most Frankensteinian dreams ever thought that there would be people walking around with other human beings grafted into them. And that'd be some sort of freakish chimera, but you have improved the quality of so many people's lives, the reduction of pain, the restoration of function, and the, the extension of life as a result of that. That uh, I gotta tell you that, that uh, what you do is very, very important. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. Um, stem cells and foot ankle surgery. All right. It's about three and a half years, I guess. Um, I've used, it's not that I jump on every particular new product that comes down the road. Because it has to make physiologic sense to me. I'm not going to use something just because it's a new widget if it doesn't really have some sort of enhancement, if there's not some sort of a benefit. And when Richard Cox, and I thank him for bringing me here, this is Richard. Here, I've got an amusing story I can tell you later. But we're, we're old. <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> I just found out about last night. I'm going to use it someday. I mean. uh, but in any, in any case, he was debating whether he should be carrying BMP versus stem cells. I said stem cells really have the future because uh, the BMP alone has a use. It doesn't seem to make uh, physiologic sense in the concentration of speed and the type of homes being produced. And, and so everything has its place. But this has a lot of different places. And there's going to be a lot more places for it in the future with regard to product development. And I'm looking forward to the day when I can pretty much treat uh, people with percutaneous injections rather than having to take them to the operating room, open them up, the bride, the pair, the place, and that type of thing. Uh, so anyhow, I, my first experience with stem cells in particular, uh, the stem cells that you make, the stem cells that uh, previously carried by another company, but now here, Osteocell Trinity, uh, Osteocell primarily, uh, was, oops, um, here, April 20th, 07, triple arthrodesis. What's a triple arthrodesis? Triple arthrodesis is a reconstructive surgery that's done in a, in a basically a salvage uh, situation when there's really not much else you can do for a patient. Now I'm hoping, of course, that some of the stuff would work to be uh, obviated by uh, a type of hyaluronic cartilage replacement in certain instances. But as you know, arthritis is what it is, and uh, it could be post-traumatic, it could be due to a, a disease process, and a host of other things from poor biomechanics and such. And uh, it results in arthritis and pain and impaired function. And uh, it's an arthritis. The triple arthrodesis is a fusion between the, the talus, which is the bone that's in the ankle, it pivots back and forth in the tibia, the calcaneus, which is your heel bone, the cuboid, which is just ahead of that, and the navicular. It's a big, big thing. And it has a relatively high rate of non-union. It takes a long time to recover from something like this. And you know, some of you may have had foot surgery in the past, perhaps a, a bunionectomy. Maybe you had to spend six weeks on a cast. I don't know, and crutches, maybe not. But with this, the typical post-operative course, there's someone right there. Yeah, I'm not going to shine. I don't know what happened, but it's okay. In any case, um, it takes 10 weeks to, to for these people to even touch the ground, the typical internal fixation. Now, you can you can speed that up a little bit if you use an X-fix, but gosh, who wants those pins sticking out of your leg and your foot? If you avoid that, it has a whole set of complications that attended with it. So the point is, is that this is something that's a big deal. It has a high complication rate, and it takes a long time to recover for it, and certain people need it. And so I've been using the stem cells since then. I've done uh, quite a few of those. I've used them in ankle fusions, and they're primarily in revisional ankle fusions when it doesn't fuse well. Um, of course, they're ankle joint replacements, but honestly, they don't work as well as the hip and the knees because, as I explained earlier, the more weight that's above that implant and the smaller the surface area, the more stress and, and strain is through that, the less the implants hold up. So fusion is basically about the standard of care until we get a high end cartilage level. But, um, in any case, um, they still have to be done. There's still a need for list frank joint fusions. The list frank is the tarsal and tarsal joint, calcaneal cuboid knot unions, aseptic necrosis of the tailored dome. These are from ankle sprains and injuries like this, 
where you'll get loss of cartilage and the cartilage does not heal well. Wafer thin pieces of bone are sheared off. They don't adhere back into place. You have to go back in and remove it. And if it's small enough, you can debride. You can do some kind of drillings of a variety of techniques. This is a this is a real application that I've used um, stem cells on failed big toe joint fusions and more. By the way, if you got questions, it's patient to ask. Um, ideal characteristics osteogenic, which means it has those types of plural retention on the same stem cells which you produce to turn into osteoblasts and osteocytes and bone. Osteoinductive means these are the chemicals that are used to stimulate those osteoblasts to turn into the cells which produce the bone. And osteo uh, conduct of means it's a scaffold. And certain products like ceramics and, and aloe graft by itself, demineralized bone matrix body, although that is also something inductive as well, provide that. And that's the, those are the ideal characteristics you want if you're going to replace bone. And that's what Atajan's bone, bone from your own body, provides. But let's face it, if someone has to go up to your hip and take out a chunk of bone and put it in your ankle, as soon as it's removed, it's dead. It's dead bone. You know, so it's got to be replaced. There's got to be a better way of doing it. And then you've got two surgery sites. Most patients who have that done complain more about the harvest site than they do about the site where they put in the bone. And your product eliminates that harvest site. 